OK, so we're going to show that this series is convergent, so this sum from 1 up to infinity is finite. And there's essentially just one trick that we're going to use to make this much more manageable to work with. So if we start with our original expression that we're summing, this root n to the 4 plus 1 minus n squared. We're going to turn this now into a fraction by using a technique that's effectively the reverse of rationalising the denominator. So we take root n to the 4 plus 1 minus n squared and multiply this now by the same square root, n to the 4 plus 1, but then we have plus n squared. We turn this into a difference of two squares expression in the numerator. And we just need to divide through by this root n to the 4 plus 1 plus n squared term so that it's still equal now. And then you can see when we expand the brackets on the top, we've got the difference of two squares, so the square root of n to the 4 plus 1 terms just give us n to the 4 plus 1, and our minus n squared times positive n squared give us negative n to the 4 for our numerator. And the denominator we just leave alone for now, we get root n to the 4 plus 1 plus n squared, and you can even see there that our n to the 4 and minus n to the 4 both cancel out there, which gives us a nice expression of 1 over root n to the 4 plus 1 plus n squared in the denominator. So now we're trying to show that the sum of this expression is finite, and we could actually take a sum which was bigger than this and show that that's finite if it turns out that's going to be easier to work with. And we can actually do this because we've got a fraction here with two things in the denominator, and both of those expressions are positive. So we can actually just replace these by 1 over n squared to make this much easier to work with. And this is going to be bigger because if we make the denominator smaller by removing the square root term, it actually makes the value of the fraction bigger then. So this is effectively telling us then that our original sum, if we just call this sigma, has got to be less than or equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. So some of you might actually recognise at this point that this sum is indeed going to be convergent, and you could start there using, for example, the comparison test to say that we've proven our original series converges. But next we'll just look at a nice proof that this sum is indeed convergent, just for completion. And we'll actually do this by working with another series which is slightly bigger than this sum of 1 over n squared. So we'll do the same sort of thing as before, we take our sum of 1 over n squared and we'll replace this fraction by another fraction which has got a slightly smaller denominator, so that the overall value of the fraction is bigger. So we could replace our n squared in the denominator just by n minus 1 times n, and because we've made the denominator smaller, we've made the value of the fraction bigger. And this would work for all of our values of n, other than when n is 1 we have a problem because we'd end up dividing by 0 here. So we'll actually write this as the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of this new expression, and we'll just leave the first term alone, and then this inequality still holds. And this is particularly nice to have now, the 1 over n minus 1 times n, because we could actually express this, you could do this using partial fractions if you like, but essentially we can write this fraction as 1 over n minus 1 take away 1 over n, so we've expressed it as a difference of two different fractions. And the easiest way to check this now would just be to multiply the numerator and denominator here by n, and multiply these by n minus 1, so we'd have n minus n minus 1 over n minus 1 times n when we carry out the subtraction, which is indeed equal to 1 over n minus 1 times n. So then we can write this sum here as 1 plus the sum from n equals 2 up to infinity of this new difference of fractions now, we've got 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n. So when we start to carry out this series now, term by term, you'll see that there'll be a lot of cancellation between these, which we'll be able to use now, once we clear a bit of board space, we'll use this to show that this series is indeed convergent. So if we look at the first few terms, you'll see that for example when n is 2, we've got 1 over 2 minus 1, so we've just got 1 minus a half, then when n is 3 we get plus a half minus a third, when n is 4 it's plus a third minus a quarter, and so on. So we've got lots of terms which cancel out with each other, so the halves cancel, the thirds cancel, but there's always one little bit extra left over at the end. It'd be nice to deal with this a little bit more rigorously. So we can actually do this by thinking of our sum to infinity as a limit of a finite sum. So we can think of this, the limit, let's say, as this capital N goes to infinity 
of our partial sum from n equals 2 up to capital N and just did the same thing 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n. So then when we do our method of differences approach again like this we can think of this as a limit and there will actually be an endpoint because we're just summing up to this capital N. So I have our first few terms will be exactly the same 1 minus a half plus a half minus a third and so on but then let's do our penultimate term so capital N minus 1 would give us plus 1 over capital M minus 2 take away 1 over capital M minus 1 and our final term when n is equal to capital N gives us plus 1 over capital M minus 1 minus 1 over capital N. So you can see all of these different pairs would cancel out, the third would cancel with the next term and this 1 over capital M minus 2 would cancel with the previous term and finally these 1 over N minus 1 terms cancel. So we're just left with then, the whole thing can just be reduced to the limit as capital N goes to infinity of just 1 minus 1 over capital N. And we can see that this fraction here as N goes to infinity is just going to be 0. So the whole limit then is actually just equal to 1. So this is really useful now because we know that our original sum is bounded from above by 1 plus this sum which we know is actually just 1. So then you can see that this is going to be less than or equal to 2. So our original series is indeed convergent then. So the only other thing left to address is that our original series, we've shown that it's bounded from above, that it definitely doesn't go to positive infinity, but what about negative infinity? So our original series, we've got the square root of n to the 4 plus 1 minus n, and we know first of all that this is going to be, it's not going to go to positive infinity as we've just seen, but to rule out the case where it could go to negative infinity, you can just see that n to the 4 plus 1, the square root of this, is always going to be bigger than the square root of n to the 4, which is n squared. So actually root n to the 4 plus 1 is always bigger than n squared, so this difference here is always going to be positive. So this is actually always going to be greater than 0, so it certainly couldn't tend to negative infinity where we take the infinite sum there. So we can say definitely then, by ruling out positive and negative infinity, that our original series is indeed convergent.